Hello, Nana here. Who welcome back to Path of Exile. We are still playing in the Hardcore Legacy League. We're solo self-found and we just hit level 33. And in our hands, we are wielding a Death's Harp now. So, we uh, hit level 32, level 33 last uh, episode. So I realized like, hey, yes, we can upgrade now. So we have a Death's Harp here and the interesting property here is that we get a extra arrow for free so we're shooting out two arrows with our frenzy attack of course i also uh four linked this one so we now have the setup with ice shot lesser multiple projectiles so we get a uh, grand total of four projectiles now rather than three we get weapon elemental damage and we have increased critical strikes the lesser multiple projectiles we can uh, swap it out for added cold and physical projectile attacks and the interesting thing is that if we switch to added cold which is numerically tooltip wise superior 1576 damage if we swap it out for a physical projectiles 1573 so that's three dps lower but you do have the penalty of lower uh, projectile attack speed which the added cold doesn't have added cold uh, it costs 10 percent more mana than physical projectiles so it's a little bit of a trade-off but numerically for this build for this setup it really uh the the cold uh damage is simply stronger better the uh one of the advantages is i've also i've added hatred back to the build also i should switch to lmp here much easier for dealing with groups i've added hatred back to the build and with spirit void so that's the uh full leech node over here plus the death's harp we can reasonably sustain our mana in fights now it's just a matter of doing enough dps so currently we're doing 1200 dps and that is enough to sustain our mana pool okay right, so you are now without add-ons then we'll just murder you and there you go it really becomes rather one-sided with this much damage. Without men like you, Gravisius, this land might just start healing itself. A fuse. Might notice slightly louder sound, slightly more orangey drop label and a different sound. That's I've tried to make the uh, currencies just to divide them more into tiers. So the stuff that you find often, the stuff that you find less often, and the stuff that you make a small happy dance for when you actually find it. So there's gonna be a couple more sounds just to uh, spice things up a little bit. But as a reaction to the, the previous video, I got a question. Oh, let's actually not do questions until we are safe like that. So put up uh, that one there. So why in early on I didn't pick up Primal Spirit and the reason for that is I simply overlooked it. Um, working on the tree I, I tend to start, start with the final tree and then I work my way backwards. I just cut off different uh, sections of the tree until I have enough skill points to roughly fit in like completing normal, completing cruel, uh, completing merciless. That, that's usually I work my way back from a level 90 build. So later on, the added mana and the mana regen that you get from Primal Spirit, you don't need them because the life and mana leech from just a single hybrid node should be able to sustain the build with ease later on. So then you don't need the regen bonuses. Strength and intelligence from here are actually pretty darn decent. It's for the attribute point that you don't have to get from your items and 20% increased flask charges gained is also something that's more difficult to quantify, but it is a useful thing to have. Also, now that we're going in, we might as well just uh, add some interesting modifiers. Also, we found a prophecy. Yeah, well, let's just keep that. And, oh yeah, I had this blessed orb with me, and uh, that was for a reason. Randomizes the numeric values of the implicit properties of an item. For this death's harp, the implicit property is the 36% increased critical strike chance. I looked it up, 
it ranges from 30% at the bottom to 50% at the top. So 36 is pretty darn on the low end of the spectrum. So if we reroll that, there's a good chance we're actually going to increase the crit chance and therefore make the item better. Currently we have a 6.8% chance to, uh, to crit. Oh, it's currently equipped, so let's, let's not do that. And we rolled it into 46. So 50 is going to be the top end, but this is not too far off. So we just simply gained half a percent base crit strike chance simply from rolling a blessed orb there. So that is something to remember that even with uniques, there is something that you can tweak. Also, 20% quality is useful to add. So our listed crit chance now is 14%. And that is a lot better than the 7 that we were working with before. Well, truth be told, we are, of course, adding a crit strike, stun, a crit strike chance over here. Uh, also, let's add another one over here. Nemesis for the next area. And let's add the things over to the side. Good bit. So in light of that, the next nodes to pick up on the, on the skill tree, I mean... I picked up uh, Primeval Force when I was just uh, running through the docks for a little bit to test out some of the uh, skill variations. I actually did unspec Spirit Void and I specced into Primal Spirit to see if it made a difference. But currently, with the current setup, we are more mana stable with Spirit Void down here than with uh, Primal Spirit. But it again a level and we picked up Primeval Force. But there's uh, two things I was uh, in doubt between. King of the Hill over here and Lethality. They both... At about 100% increased critical strike chance. And well, we were working with no, a, a bow that only had like 5% or so uh, crit chance. It didn't really matter all that much. And more importantly, for Frenzy, it was difficult to trigger the uh, Frenzy charge on crit with Frenzy to snowball into getting three Frenzy charges. If our base crit chance goes up, then of course we can have better chance of actually critting. And I figured once we have both of the uh, of the wheels, then oh, we're gonna crit every three or four hits, and then even with the frenzy, we should be able to sustain it. So with that in mind, I'm actually gonna change my plans for the early build slightly. Originally, I want to grab herbalism. And I wanted to grab Survivalist over here for some, some resist and some evasion. Instead, I'm going to grab Herbalism and then I'm going to go for the two crit nodes and I'm going to drop Survivalist. Uh, or I'm going to postpone Survivalist until afterwards. So normally I wouldn't go for the uh, two crit nodes until we basically hit Merciless. And now we're going to do them a bit earlier. Also, that was a double ghost, which is a really a freak accident. But of course, we already murdered everything. So we can't really work with that anymore. Jewelers, Strongbox. Let's uh, magicify it. Freezes me when activated. Uh, sure. I'll just become Freeze immune. Deal with that. No. But as you notice, well, we do lose some mana but it regenerates uh, quickly enough or it leeches quickly enough that effectively we're not really running out of mana anymore and that is one of the nice things of leech combined with a, uh, a decent amount of damage dealing then it will make up for itself and mana regen you really do need quite a bit of base mana regen to scale it okay this is going to be Cole's room so we'll just replace lesser multiple projectiles with uh, that's cold. And then of course we get ourselves a room here with a shrine. Can we grab it? Yeah, we are now impenetrable. Oh. And there we go. This was a lot more one-sided than our previous encounter. When we uh, encountered him ghost possessed with a melee build. As a ranged character we simply just danced around him. It's, uh, advantage of, uh, of, of ranged builds of course is that you really don't have to go toe to toe with the scary stuff. 
the scary stuff has to try to go toe to toe with you and you simply laugh at them and run away. Also, I forgot to color the orb of augmentation. I'll need to rectify that in the near future. And then we should be getting to a waypoint rather quickly or rather soon. And there's the waypoint. Excellent. Let's empty our pockets here and then we're going to go into level two. But oh, as you see, we are getting to a, uh, a much, much better state for the build. Let's see. Is this a potential upgrade? Well, it's not, uh, not a unique, of course, but nah, it, it's rather rubbish. And this as well, it's not an upgrade Same. over what we have. Ooh. Uh, no, Gregor is not going to be happy until Piety is dead, but Maramoa is going to do a little happy dance now. And give us a gem. Tornado shot, blast rain, wild strike, or blade flurry. Well, let's uh, pick a blast rain. Don't think we found that one anywhere just yet. Let's add it to the gem collection. And then we can simply move, move on. Piety is next. <clears throat> so we do have our full socket. So we got Perendus, we're gonna get Nemesis, we're gonna get Prophecy. And then that's gonna be it. But it's also, you know, why while leveling I was not strictly focused on hyper optimizing our, our links. Because I knew at level 32 we would have Death's uh, a Harp at the ready. And there's simply no point in no trying to optimize things too much and especially just shuffling your skills around too much if you know that in two or three levels you're gonna get a unique weapon that you will be using for hopefully the rest of the game you there a moment of your time okay assassinate something over there hello who is the oh, yeah Tenemoga. boom and we get a unique Amulet. The Stone of Lazwar. 50% block chance applied to spells. That is pretty cool, but we have zero block chance. Courtesy of uh, using bows. So, well, technically there is the there is a quiver that actually gives you uh, a block chance, the, the rear guard. It's like a small shield that also contains arrows but yeah for us that's not not an option if we don't have it it doesn't exist that that's my philosophy when it comes to uh, to unique items so but oh yeah we also uh, last episode we found a leather armor this one triple Elemental resists, so that's a decent base. So our evade chance is now 57%. So a lot of the attacks are simply just gonna gonna miss, which really does help. Especially in an area like this where there's a lot of projectile attacks coming our way. So if we can simply just sidestep 60% of them, that means of course we're taking a lot less damage and it means our leech has more time to do its thing. Because right now, oh, we're not using Vile Pact, so our leech is still slow leech, leech over time. Traditional leech, you could uh, could call it. Let's see, uh, single cards was the way forward, if I remember correctly. Let's see, skill point. So, as I said, let's grab Herbalism first. Let's increase the size of our life pool. I think with Herbalism, we should be able to push it to 1200 life without changing our gear. And just having a slightly larger buffer to work with is it's useful. Um, well, it just allows you to do better with spike damage. It allows you to sustain uh, lo the, the, the more complicated situations for a longer time. And it just allows for more player error, which is always good. At least in my case, because I do make some player errors from time to time. Uh, 
Let's see. I go there. Silver coins. I do like those. As I said, once we hit the right lake, I'm gonna be trying to farm the upgrade for my bow. At least uh, getting the uh, the prophecy for that. It's uh, surprisingly difficult to find information on level requirements for prophecies and things like that. So, oh, the prophecy that we need is the, the one that upgrades the Death's Harp into Death's Opus. We need to kill Nightwing, that's going to be the uh, archer boss in uh, the Dried Lake. And... Effectively, oh, hello there. Oh, I know from that is the base item is level 32. That's this one. The upgraded version requires level 44. And, well, we need to be in Dried Lake at the lowest. The thing is, I have no idea whether it can spawn in normal or whether we need to wait for Cruel. Thing is, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to trigger the prophecy before we actually hit level 44. On the other hand, if we manage to obtain the prophecy on normal, then we can just simply play through until we are play level 44, which actually is not all that difficult. It's just a little bit of grinding and it might be that we just have to you know, play through act one of Cruel and then go back to complete the prophecy. There are all kinds of interesting options that way. But there's surprisingly little information on, on prophecies and especially... Nope. The upgrade prophecy is a rather a rare one. So, yeah, that, that's one reason why I've been just hoarding uh, silver coins for a long, 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 long time. I have pursued a greater existence. What have you ever done but serve yourself? <clears throat> okay, just... Uh, Assassin's Marker. Uh, maybe I should have switched out of my LMP, but it works. Uh, let's step knight it. Boom. But you notice here, single boss fight, higher resists, so we're doing less damage. And that instantly makes our leech less effective. Because leech does need to inflict damage in order to be successful. Well, Piety as a boss, she should have 30% to all elemental resistances. We are piercing 5% from here, 8% from here, so that's 13% in total. And um, I believe once we hit the library, we, we can uh, grab cold penetration, which should nullify boss resistances. Also, I should have sold uh, there, but we'll see. We'll do that later. So, we'll just... Oh, and sell that one. Again, now oh, 81% increase the fizz. It's a poor cold roll. Extra crit chance is decent, but, well, we got a pretty darn good bow. So, well, item upgrades are not really going to be all that relevant for quite a while to come. This is tempting with 48% uh, intelligence on it, but everything else is just rubbish. So, thanks, but no thanks. So we'll simply move on. See, we exactly have 100 coins to spend later on. And this one goes in with the uniques. Hey. Uh, yeah, we still have everything. So we killed Piety. And I think for this episode, in terms of boss fights, that's going to be... That's probably going to be it. Do we still have an instance up? We can piggyback on this one. Then next episode we can go after Dominus. Yeah, that, that seems like a like a better setup. So in between, I'll just simply go and clear the library. It's uh, no, it's more of a side quest. We've already done it before, so I'm not gonna bother you too much with that. So next episode we're gonna go after Dominus, and then we're gonna move forward into Act Four. But we finally have our Death's Harp, and that means we have our endgame weapon equipped. At least as far as I am concerned, I consider this to be my uh, the base for the endgame weapon. And once we upgrade it to Death's Opus, it will truly be. 
So, with that, we're gonna thank you very much for watching. And I hope to see you again next time. Bye bye.